Uh, and we are taking a look at the concerns uh, of the Senior Staff Association of uh, the public universities across uh, the country who have declared a strike, indicating that um, their members uh, who are charged with providing critical administrative roles uh, across public universities will be withdrawing their services nationwide, giving governments redundancy or perhaps dormancy in resolving their concerns uh, regarding conditions of service. We've been interacting with some uh, leading figures uh, of the group, and here's what they, they've got to say about day one of that strike. So the Senior Staff Association, KNUSD chapter, have begun their first day of protest against government's decision to scrap their 50% basic allowance, which they have been taking over time. According to them, government started to scrap this allowance last year, November, without their consent. They are protesting against government decision and they say they would not return to work until government restores this 50% basic allowance. Our main issues are two. The main issue has to do with our tier two that government has been holding and has not paid since February of last year. That is our main issue. And this issue has been an issue that we have gone to government on so many occasions trying to let government address this issue but government has refused to address this issue. Some of our members have gone on pension and when you see the amount of money that they have been given, you realize that government is actually making things difficult for us. That is our main issue. And the second issue is about information that we have gathered. That indicates that the government is going to reduce our um, allowance, that is the overtime allowance, fixed overtime allowance from 50% to 10 percent the government is giving a, a new name to the to the to the allowance uh, call in allowance this has been an arrangement that we have had for a very long time and we feel that this is going to have an effect on our members imagine your salary you've been reduced to that level these are issues that are so concerning to our members and that are the two main reasons why we have gathered to embark on this industrial action You are taking what we are already enjoying, which is very bad. So he should think twice and then restore our allowance for us. So when they are to resume work, it's not clear yet. According to the association, they would only return to work upon government's decision to restore their 50% basic allowance. For Joy News, my name is Nana Abwati Dankwe Yadom, Kumasi. And from the Ashanti region, we head up north to UDS, where Machina Bugri reports. Uh, the various departments of the University for Development Studies have come to a halt following the declaration of the strike by the Senior Staff Association of Universities in the country. The union met to declare their support for the strike announced by their leadership. Speaking to the media chairman of the Senior Staff Association of the University for Development Studies, Mohamed Zakaria said if government indeed prioritizes universities in the country, it should have addressed these issues before the universities resume. The implications of the government actions are unacceptably severe, particularly for retirees from 2020 to 2023, who have been denied their rightful lump sums and are currently facing abject poverty and illness 
in their own houses for after a year of dedicated service to the public universities in Ghana. We are not coming back to work. Sure. Uh, we know it is counterproductive, but we are saying that the government of Ghana should be held responsible for all the suffering that will arise as a result of um, this strike. It's unfortunate, as we have indicated, that this is the time that uh, see, the academic and administrative work is in full year. But government should have looked at that aspect and listened to us and solve the problem. But government failed to do that. Putting the poor students of this country into trouble. Because now we are packing back and baggage. So if government of Ghana is serious about the tertiary educational activities in Ghana, government should listen to us within the shortest possible time. But if government of Ghana thinks that tertiary education is not a priority to it, then fine, we are fine with it. The people of Ghana, we are all watching. It's unfortunate though that we are saying that senior staff is not responsible. The government of Ghana is responsible for all the suffering of our, our staff and the students. That's exactly what. So today we have declared an indefinite strike. Right? Indefinite means indefinite. We are going to put in place a task force. If we get you in your office, we will take the right punitive action against you. Meanwhile, some students of the university are worried this would affect the academic calendar. Yeah, so as you know, after COVID, the academic calendar was distorted. So coming into this year, 2024, we're expecting that if all things being equal, we are going to have the academic calendar back to normalcy. And here is the case, senior staff association have gone on strike. As you can see behind me, we are doing freshers of registration. We started last week. And then right after they leave here, they have to go to their various departments to make verification. You go to the offices right now, there is nobody there. And if you are not verified officially, you are not a student. You are not a very, if you are not verified officially, you are not counted as a, as, as, as a student. Let me put it that way. Yeah, so since they've gone on strike, it's going to affect studies because after verification, that is when you can proceed to class. But then here is the case, you can't even go and verify. This strike is really going to affect us a lot since uh, our lectures are very important when it comes to our academics. That's that's mainly our purpose here. And then, as of now, uh, academic year has started and we are just roaming around as students. We are not attending lectures, nothing, just because of this particular thing. So we are just pleading with the government. We are really pleading with you so that uh, lectures, you help our lectures so that our lectures can come up. And James uh, Bannon Yakobo is the trustee of the uh, Senior Staff Association, Universities of Ghana, speaking uh, to me earlier. See, uh, but what I know is that um, before we went on uh, the industrial strike, we have written letters uh, to um, government. Uh, you know, before you embark on such a strike, you need to notify government at least uh, some number of days, like two weeks. We did that on the 4th of January. We didn't hear anything from them. And then... Uh, after we declared the strike, I saw some communique flying around. I don't know how true it is that Labour Commission is inviting us for a hearing. That I'm not too sure. Have you received that letter officially? Officially, not that I can say. Yes. What the social media will suggest? Yeah, sometimes something like that. You know, sometimes things can, things can fly. So once I didn't get that official notification from the national seat. I cannot say that. Uh, are you willing to engage? Oh, why not? Why not? We are employed in the university to work. And nobody is happy to be at home, including myself. Look, my brother, let me tell you, sincerity, this strike, I'm not happy about it. It is, we, we are taking it as a pinch of salt because I have my case at the basic school. And the basic school is going to be affected. These children will be at home. Whilst other case learn. So you can see that I'm not a happy man. But I'm also thinking about the future. Those of us who have worked in this noble university 40 something years, 50 something years, and they cannot assess their lump sum when it comes to patients. 
This is a very serious issue. If we think that we are not thinking about now, we will also go and the same thing will follow us. So why won't we let government know now that we are active? We should fight for those who are inactive so that at the end of the day, they can get what is due them. How can you work in the university for more than 40 years? You go home, they give you 2,000. 2,000. Some, some of them, 1,005. These are the realities on the ground. No university worker is happy. As when it comes to our pensions, they don't respect us. They do it anyhow. You go sometimes. When was the last time you engaged government? We have been engaging government on this. You can remember our last strike. It was the same thing. That's the old as some areas from 2010 to 2016. Then we fought government. Government paid uh, the the principal, and then uh, they didn't even use the appropriate rate. That you know, normally the, the laws of the pension are very clear. When you default, you default for a number of uh, when you default, there is three percent penalty slap on the the default uh, period. Okay, in this period, the default period now is the default is eleven months. Eleven months. Yes. So you have to pay. You have to pay with the interest, and the one they paid last 2016, uh, 2010 to 2016, they used some. Uh, a simple interest instead of uh, the, the percentage rate, which did not go well with us. We was we were actually so change. We didn't get the value for money. You get it. So the law is clear. We should this time round. We are going by what the law says. That once we default, you must apply the uh, appropriate penalty sanctions as stipulated in our uh, communique when we are called. The, the final question now is. If government wants to negotiate or talk with you at the National Labor Commission, it will then mean that you have to call off the strike. When it gets to no, that no, point, will you call off the not, strike? Will you call off? No, we will not call off the strike until all these things are finalized. We can be on strike while we engage with it. It is not a would that be engagement in good faith? Because usually the National Labor Commission will the, ask the, you to the call the call off the strike. Commission will, will you call off first before you no, engage? We will never. We don't call off strike while we engage. They, they, we know that. We have already informed them. We have followed the due process. So we've given them that two uh, weeks uh, notice. And they are aware. So if they are calling us, they are calling us to engage them whilst, I mean, they appeal to us to our conscience. If we, but I'm saying that this, this issue has been lingering for quite too long. And if we look at this strike, actually, we have closed everywhere, including security, hospital, and then basic school. This normally when we go on strike, we exempt some areas to work. But this time around, we have locked everywhere. So we want them to actually solve this problem once and for all. We believe Ghana, there's money. I don't want to hear there's no money issue. Because this country is rich. This is a rich country. We have everything. We have gold. We have everything. There is no mineral that we lack, lack in this country. Let's treat our workers with some kind of decorous and respect. And then ask them to give out their best. Because if you treat me well, I will give up my best. You know, if you have your wife at home and you don't treat her well, you will see the difference. It's just the same thing. Our management, including uh, government, are not treating us very well. Recently, they are trying to touch our uh, hospital, free uh, uh, hospital care. I mean, all these things, how will you do that and you expect the worker to give up his or her best? These are the things we are talking about. And nobody should think that the invasive worker, we are so much interested in going on strike. No. Our interest is not strike. If governments solve our problem, we will come back to work. We must stay at home. What will I gain? Yes, sir. Thank you. On to health, uh, Ghana's vaccination and immunization against uh, six childhood killer diseases could face a major setback this year. If the government fails to meet its co-financing obligations under the uh, Gavi vaccine initiative, according to stakeholders in health, the government uh, of uh, the government of Ghana in 2022 failed to meet 100% of its co-financing obligation and uh, only paid uh, in the first quarter of 2023. For 2023, the government made full payments of its obligation in 2024. Uh, let's get on Zoom now and uh, bring in Dr. Hilda Boy uh, the, uh, of the Pediatric Society of Ghana. Uh, she's uh, joining us via Zoom now. Thank you so much uh, for spending some time with us. Uh, for those who are not you know, familiar with the technical terms uh, of this uh, six 
um, killer diseases. Uh, you know, how important is it to the development of children? Uh, and kindly unmute for us uh, so we are able to get your concerns. Hello, good afternoon to you and your listeners. Um, I'm not the CEO from Pediatrics Association. I'm the Executive Director for Hope for Future Generations. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, Cecilia, welcome to the show. All, all the same, uh, you're equally concerned about what's happening uh, just as the Pediatric Society is. Uh, and so we, we get to that straight off uh, by looking at the concerns of your group as well, the Hope um, for the Future Foundation. Uh, so for your group, I'm just wondering what your perspective uh, is on this matter. Okay, so thank you very much again. Um, we appreciate what the government of Ghana is doing and to ensure and secure the future of uh, our children and pregnant women. And so we are calling on government to meet its co-financing obligation to Gavi. Very important, the 2022, 2023, government has done very well to pay 60%. And in 2024, we heard that government has paid the rest of the 2023 co-financing. We just want to be sure that this is done, but the, from the feedback that we are getting from key stakeholders, government has paid. So that is it. But the important thing is that any payment of this co finance is important to give the opportunity to Gavi to secure vaccines for Ghana for our children. And so our focus or our call on government of Ghana to ensure that the co-financing for Gavi is paid early enough to enable Gavi get the vaccine for Ghana so that our children can be immunized so that we don't face shortage of vaccines in the middle of the year. Uh, the government is uh, currently facing uh, undoubtedly an economic challenge or crisis. Uh, in the wake of this, what recommendations are you making in terms of funding? Because that will be a key challenge. Well, we know government is facing challenges, but should we leave our children to die from preventable diseases? We know that investing in vaccine is the biggest investment you can do because if children fall sick, what will happen? The government will end up spending a lot of money. And we all believe in prevention is better than cured. We wait for children to get measles, to get diphtheria and all other diseases before we go and be buying drugs and looking for treatment. Look at the struggle that our health system is going in. Health resource, health financing is becoming a challenge. Mm. We have our systemic issues already. We have right. our bureaucratic issues. Uh, it's, it's the our same children reason. should really suffer and, and, that because we are not able to meet their needs. Yeah, we and it's not the main reason the for which I'm asking the question. Um, the government in the wake of COVID-19, of course, um, brought about the uh, COVID levy post the pandemic. And that's why I'm asking if there are any immediate solutions in terms of financing. Okay. So we are, you know, we are still contributing to the COVID levy. And so stakeholders are calling on government to turn that COVID levy that we are contributing for health and also meet its co-financing obligations, not only for Gavi, but also to Global Fund. I think we are not meeting our co-financing right. obligation. How can we stay on our own if our health is depending on donors? Mm. I don't think that is what we all want now right. in this country. Grateful uh, for your time, Cecilia you. Senu, CEO for uh, Hope of the Future uh, Foundation, joining us uh, here.